I got a call at about one o'clock in the morning, um, roughly, that the building was on fire. It was a fire that had the potential to do much more damage to the historic downtown section of Bethel. Firefighters got the initial call about the blaze on Greenwood Avenue at about one o'clock this morning. Firefighters say the age of the building and the fact that it's been renovated multiple times made their job even more difficult. I did have a camera in my studio at the time, so I was able to open up my app and look at the camera and watch the water pouring through the ceilings and the smoke and everything happening. So it was obviously very upsetting, but I jumped, actually called Miss Ali, who at the time was an employee, and let, let her know what was going on. And she was able to get here a lot faster than me because she lived in Bethel. I remember jumping out of bed and being like, because she doesn't call me at 2 a.m., thankfully. She's a nice boss. And I answered and she just was like, the, the building's on fire. I remember, I believe she said, like, it's gone. It's all gone. And I was like, what? Like, what? Like my initial reaction was, Oh my goodness, I've literally opened this studio maybe eight months prior. So I had put all my money and hard you know, work and sweat and tears into ripping out the carpets and rebuilding. And so I was really devastated. I knew it was a historical building. I knew, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the shop itself was because it was so quaint and I loved how low the ceilings were. And it was, it was really cool looking and very artsy, but I didn't, um, I didn't know too much about what happened with the fire, only that everyone got out safely. I knew how it started and, and that was about it. It's a building that every chief in this town is driven by at one point or another to look at it and try to figure out what they would do. I was the lucky one that had to put my plan into action that morning. We knew there had been renovations within the building and, and when that happens a lot of times, um, plumbers, electricians, the cable people come in you know, they're poking holes in walls to run wire. So now, you know, you got all these little holes through the wall, which the fire actually was able to find its way through them. And it was very hard to, to figure out where it was. The firefighters were banging on the window. They were trying to get through the door um, to like help. And I, they were, there was water going on the top of the building. The fire was upstairs mostly. So they were trying to get through the door and I had keys. So I was like across the, the place and I was like, I have keys, don't, you don't have to break the w window. Like, so they took my keys and they opened the door, but then they left my keys in the door and <laughs> they went inside to, to uh, put out the fire, but they were my car keys <laughs> and everything I had. So I couldn't go home, so I was standing there. When I first pulled up on scene, I could see <clears throat> as I was facing the building, putting my coat and bunker pants on, I can see through the smoke, I can see the orange flame swirling in one window of the building, it's in one room. My initial thought was it's room and contents. We got this 45 minutes, hour tops, some cleanup, and then we're out of here and the guys can go back home to bed. To get notified that early was unusual. And then uh, when I picked up the phone, I was informed that it was one of the oldest historic structures in town that was on fire. And at that time, the blaze was threatening the entire block of buildings uh, in the area. So not just the uh, historic building, but the adjacent buildings as well. So I knew right away that it was an extremely serious situation. Over the years, buildings like that have had a lot of fire improvements put in, a lot of fire safety improvements that didn't exist when it was built in the mid 1800s. But nevertheless, a building of that age is going to have a lack of fire stops so that once a fire gets into the outer wall of the building, it can go all the way up into the attic. Uh, that is something that was prohibited uh, in, in construction methods many, many decades ago. But some of these older buildings still have that. I think they call it balloon construction. Balloon construction was something that, that took place back in the pre-60s. Um, basically, it's the walls open from the bottom all the way up to the to the roof. It's just uh, 16 or 24 foot beams that go up every, you know, 24 inches. There's no fire stops in between anywhere. Um, so once it gets in there, if the fire is on the first floor, the fire can can travel. It, it's like a chimney within the wall. You're dealing with a, a timber frame building with wood that was 150 years old. So it's dry. And uh, there's another word that I call that, it's called fuel. <laughs> I remember a fire instructor um, asking a question and he says, how long do you think 
you have to get out of a building safely when you hear the smoke alarm go off. He said most people put between two minutes, three minutes. He said the average amount of time from the smoke alarm indicating that the, there's a fire present to possibly losing consciousness from smoke inhalation or even becoming a victim of flashover is about 35 to 45 seconds. That was a real eye-opening experience. So, but it, but it shows not only how important those safety uh, devices are, like smoke alarms, just a very simple thing like that, but how fast everything has to move and how well-trained the firefighters have to be knowing that the, a fire can spread that quickly and become lethal that quickly. It's really, a, it's a remarkable thing that nobody was more seriously injured or, or died in that fire. The apartment it started in, um, the gentleman worked with computers, so they're thinking that yeah, an overloaded electrical circuit maybe. We have a lot of older homes in this area, mine included. Mine was built in 1860. I think a lot of people moving in, they, they move into the older homes because they like the style, you know, the, the older New England type charm, but um, if unless the electrical's been updated, they don't realize that you can't plug in a lot of the modern appliances to, to some of these older electrical systems. Do you think that people should probably be looking to be more aware of that? Uh, yes, especially now with the with the electric bicycles and more people buying electric vehicles. Um, they're going to be putting charging stations in. These homes are not going to be able to hold uh, what's needed for one of those, those larger power stations to charge your Tesla or your, or your Hyundai electric. It, it is a concern uh, with, with electric vehicles coming and other electric appliances. Homeowners should really Take out the owner's manual and read what's required. In fact, read before you even buy the appliance or, or the vehicle and make sure that your home is wired properly for it. The thing that sticks in my mind uh, being out there in Greenwood Avenue as the sun came up, at that time there were already people walking around saying, uh, what can we do for you guys? You know, Can we get you some coffee? Can we get you some donuts? The GoFundMe effort, the crowdsourcing effort was underway by dawn that day which is just amazing yeah. in a cool way. And then the community of Bethel were phenomenal and they came together. They helped us with, I think the fire department gave us chairs and tables. And luckily because we had two locations, was able to go to the other location, get stock and content for the kids to use and set up within 24 hours. I can, I can think back 20, 30 years and thinking of all the times when there's been a crisis, whether it's a community-wide crisis or just a single family in crisis, where somebody steps in and organizes some kind of a community-wide effort to help them out. Uh, it, it, it really speaks to how closely knit this community is. Uh, even though we're growing and we're, you know, really the, we're the size of a smaller city, you know, with over 20,000 people, but we still behave like we're a village of a thousand people. And that feels great. It's a great thing to see.